And welcome back to Your Region 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about contradictions again. Uh, we've already had one video on the argument from contradiction, uh, which if you haven't seen that video, go watch it, because uh, this is kind of a uh, continuation of that discussion. But the idea here is that if you can prove a contradiction uh, in your system, you need to reconsider one of your assumptions in your system, as described in that video, uh, in order to regain consistency. So you want, at the, when you have this system of the world, as discussed in the Democritus video, uh, or a kind of system of government, uh, such as the Republic, as discussed in uh, Aristocles' video, uh, or, or anything else that you're discussing, if you have contra contradictions, you have to remove something. And so, you uh, are, are going to be removing some something that you said, or something that you posited, or something that you described, some part of your definition, until you have this consistent view of things. And it, it can be any part, uh, or any theorem, or any description, or any part of your definition. Uh, and you can get into weird situations when you do this. Uh, if you have, you know, going back to the Occam's Razor video, you, you can remove things that seem to be the most complicated over and over and over again until you get to points where you're starting to remove very simple things. Uh, Bell's theorem is a good example of where somewhat simple things start to come into question whether or not we should be kind of removing them. So I'm not going to go into how Bell's theorem works, it's a little bit advanced, but uh, there are examples where there is relatively simple ideas that are false uh, and that we can start to question even the, the kind of foundational knowledge going back to the Descartes video uh, in, in such a way that uh, we, we can bring into question those kind of foundational pieces of our worldview. And so you can even view this in terms of software. Uh, there's a guy, Alan Lovejoy, I don't really agree with everything that he says, but he's got some absolute gems that he comes up with every once in a while. Uh, so, quote, that's what a software bug is, a logical contradiction, unquote. That's a perfect description of what we're trying to get across, and that you're debugging your, your thought, your, your programs, your frame of mind. Uh, whenever you notice a contradiction, uh, you have to fix it by doing one thing or the other, removing one part or another. Examples of this uh, is for much of my life, I've been kind of looking up to the Regina Manifesto, uh, this kind of view of what government could be, is defined in Regina, a place that I even lived for quite some time. Uh, however, if you actually read the Regina Manifesto, you'll see that it includes a system of centralized credit, of centralized decision making on the level of credit that is so vastly different than what Ripple is that you could not believe both of them, and you could not found your worldview on a Ripple-like system while believing in the ideas in the Regina Manifesto. One of them has to give. Uh, another example is I have encountered two people who spent time in the Canadian artillery forces, in the Canadian forces and artillery, and they have two, and they were around during the Oka crisis, and they have two completely contradictory accounts of what happened in Oka. Again, I'm not going to describe what I think the result of that is. But it's worth pointing out that there, you will, in practice, if you pay attention closely enough, you will find these big, glaring contradictions. And you have to decide how, which part you're going to no longer believe in order to resolve yourself of these con contradictions. And you will, quote from Walt Whitman, do I contradict myself? Very well. Then I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes, unquote. You know, you eat and then talk about food and you feel hungry. You know, you, you will encounter these things that are contradictory in terms of what you believe, how you feel, especially going over the long period of time as discussed in the last video. Uh, that things you will experience, there will be contradictions. University uh, in the 12th century and in other, other times and places was a place to resolve contradictions without violent conflict. Uh, between different authorities, between different people of different religious backgrounds, would bring their ideas 
that seem to be contradicting each other, and the universities would then start to look at what the best way to remove things and remove things that people believe was uh, in order to come across and create a consistent worldview. Foreign policy and economics are rich in contradictions. And, and if you read someone like Noam Chomsky, you'll, you'll find that there are things that people believe that if you put more than a second or two of thought into it, you start to see the contradictions kind of bleed through to the surface. And e even just in, in our basic cultural practices, um, you, you could, by about 2005, uh, I, had a, I had a little bit of help from my parents uh, in uh, supporting me and kind of helping to pay for food and uh, possibly even rent and stuff like that when I completely ran out of money. I, I didn't feel very independent. Uh, I couldn't afford to drink. I couldn't afford to, uh, you know, in participate in some of the other things that other people of kind of that age group and cohort were participating in. Nevertheless, I was, I, and even in, in those cases, I wasn't as inter interested in taking part of it, but there were things that I was interested in doing. And so I was interested in kind of listening to, for example, The Cure. And I was, I would have viewed at the time kind of an, a utopia idea of drinking absinthe uh, and embracing nihilism. But there was this part of me that was still being helped by another part of the world, by my parents who I cared about very much. Uh, and so that there was this kind of part of me that was not consistent in that, that I was not interested in you know, partake, partaking in the pattern of helping people in the same way that I was interested in, although I never got a chance to do it, uh, for example, drinking absinthe and kind of engaging in hedonistic behavior. Uh, and so there was this kind of difference in, in what I would have seen as desirable and what was actually happening with my life at the time, that was a huge contradiction in, in my mind later on. A again, it's, it's not you know, necessary you know, which is right or what, what part of that was wrong, but it's, it's important to see it. It's important to see the, the difference between the, the what was actually happening, the things I thought valuable, and what I would have chosen had I had access to more material wealth and whatever. And all of these things are related. Likewise, in 2002, I would have viewed levels of energy in a similar way to a you know, utility function that I, I would have described today. I had an identity and a name for myself in each subset or each kind of utility function that I would have had. But again, these, these goals that I would have had were often contradictory, and there was no clear way of resolving that contradiction. Quote, Science abhors contradictions. Scientists' minds are replete with them. Unquote. This is, if I'm pronouncing it right, Brandi's first law. So th this is just kind of an expression of the problem. There isn't, you know, I, other videos will describe what you do and how to get rid of it different parts of your ideas and how to change the way you view, you know, look at the different approaches to you, approach things from different ways until you no longer have a contradiction. But it's worth pointing out that there have been many contradictions that I've encountered in my life. The way that I approach things, the way that I view things, and it's worth, you know, pointing out that there is a way to get consistency and to, to remove that from your world. So, maybe look at your own life. And stop and think about it. Use the journal and the, the, the view of yourself from the distant past, if you've, able to if you've been able to make one, as recommended in the last video. See if you can see things about the way you approach things that would contradict the things that you believe, things that you partake in, things that you're interested in partaking, things that you're interested in viewing, things that you have viewed, uh, all of these things. Try to, to compare and contrast different parts of who you are with each other uh, and see if they continue to make sense. Uh, it's worth at least putting in the effort. The, I, I, hopefully there's, a, there, there, there's probably lots of questions you could ask, but other videos are probably more appropriate for questions. But th this is just kind of a, an attempt to get to you to do this thing. So go, you know, when you shut this video down, 
or pause the next video or stop listening to things for a while and just think about yourself and your context and see if you can find any contradictions. Have fun.